Grotesque is a 1988 horror film directed by Joe Tornatore and starring Linda Blair, Tab Hunter, Donna Wilkes, Brad Wilson, Michelle Benasson, Guy Stockwell, and Robert Zadar. Subtitle alert. The film opens with a code red weather alert and a monologue. Was as you were sent to me from somewhere in the distant past. Where the germ of our beings were unnurtured. There's almost three minutes of this shit. John shows up and we're treated to slurping. Then we discover it's only a movie that's being viewed by special effects guy Orville and this low rent Roger Corman. That has got to be the best makeup and special effects work you have ever done. Sweetheart, it's simply marvelous. Yeah, but the movie sucks. Linda Blair and Donna Wilkes. Lisa and Kathy are on their way to Lisa's parents' house up in the mountains, and her dad happens to be that special effects guy. Jesus, switch the Sanka, bitch! This portion of Grotesque is brought to you by Burger King. Burger King, that would be $2, please. Thank you. Here's your change. Thanks. Well, I think I can handle it. There you go. But you know what? I'll keep it in mind. Holy shit, this is practically a commercial for Burger King in the middle of the movie. Then we get more driving and more errands being ran. Hey, hi, Terry. Hi, Lisa. How do you like my doll? This Porsche Grotesque is brought to you by Cabbage Patch Dolls by Xavier Roberts. Hey, Mr. Fulton. Hi, Lisa. It's been a long time since we've seen you up here. Yes, it has. Nice motorhome. Well, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, but... You're going to declare bankruptcy. Mr. Fulton, have you met my friend Kathy? How do you do, Kathy? Hi, nice to meet you. How much do we owe you? Nothing. It's on the house. Don't worry about it. Well, you're never going to be able to pay for shit when you're giving your stock away, idiot. Tell your dad that I'm going to be up there first thing tomorrow morning. We're going to go deep sea fishing in that pond behind the house. And he delivers a warning to the girls. You mean those punkers? You can call them that if you want to. But they look like troublemakers to me. Meanwhile... I am losing my patience! How much longer do I have to sit here? Huh? Huh? You have this thing fixed up! You can really tell this guy is holding back in his performance. The gang of punks plan on knocking over Lisa's parents' house because he works in Hollywood. Slowing down. Why well, can't you run him over? Oh no. They try to sweet talk them into some help. Open the fucking door or I will. Open the fucking door. Open the car, bitch. I can't believe they wouldn't lend that charming young man a hand. Also, why has no one called the sheriff on these assholes? They hike two miles and finally reach the house and mom! Then we get some foreshadowing about other characters that I bet are a huge plot of the story. When's Uncle Rod coming? Uncle Rod will hopefully be here tomorrow. Mom, how's Patrick? Uh, he has his good and his bad days. Lisa goes to shower and hears some footsteps. Kathy unpacks and, yep, more footsteps. <laughs> Holy shit! Surprise, friend of my daughter's I have never met. If I said that I didn't mean to scare you, I'd be lying. You are a creepy old fucker, aren't you? At dinner, Kathy kicks back and takes a pull on the 1980s, then is shown the den. Yeah, it scared the hell out of me. You know, he looks so real. You know, sometimes it's so hard to tell the difference between what's real and what's not. Let's be honest, this guy is the Kmart equivalent of Tom Savini. What is reality and what's illusion? 
Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. You think that's possible? Uh, you're freaking me out, old man. <laughs> You stop giggling, keep a straight face. What a marriage. I don't see how she puts up with his ass. It's time for some slumber party girl talk. Well, Uncle Rod is coming tomorrow and he's really funny. So help us take our mind off it. Yeah, is he cute? I don't know, he's my uncle. Ew. And in the cold winter outside, someone is watching the house. Looks like we're in for another thunderstorm. Sweetie, I've fed Patrick, and he's doing just fine. Huh? Now that's a convenient ladder. Kathy wakes up, and surprise! The gang wants some money, then things start getting really weird. Oh, I guess that's Patrick. They kill Dad and demand some money again, leading to this. And maybe she'll remember where she hid the family jewels. Come on, Lee! No! No! Whoa! Kathy and Lisa make a break for it when Sensational Sherry fails. Well, Mom is dead. <laughs> I believe Kathy has full-on lost her shit at this point. She gets cornered by Mr. Hornball, but is saved by Shelly, and nope, she's fucking dead. They continue pressing for money, eventually tearing up the house, with Lisa making a Friday the 13th, the final chapter, exit. <laughs> You can make a sweet drinking game based on the amount of times they say bitch in this flick. They search the house and what the fuck was that? In the den, these two decide it's time to get it on. Oh, it's just a wind-up dog. Jesus, I think there's a room behind here. I'll open it up. Who knows, it may be full of jewels. Sure. Or it's a sex dungeon. They enter the room and... <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, sir, you have a little bit of face hanging from your face there. Patrick finds Dad dead and the remaining punks get the fuck out of Dodge. Here's a back adjustment. And now everyone is running in this winter wonderland. We gotta get away from that thing. We'd be better off if we split up. Got it? Jim, you go that way. You come with me. Oh, that's a great idea. Right. Where'd you get that? Back at the house. Oh, that's why it's a great idea, because you have a fucking gun! These two hide in a mine shaft and build a fire, which is a smart thing to do when someone is looking to kill you. My ass doesn't get cold. I don't doubt it, Donna. That's because you think with your ass and not your brain. <laughs> that's not nice. The next time you try to make it with a chick, why don't you try to get it in before you get it off? Oh, he's a two-pump chump. Then he fucking leaves. I guess not. Santa Claus. Yeah, Santa Claus. You like Santa Claus? Santa? It's the next day, and I'm wondering why Linda Blair hasn't died of exposure by now. He's a freak, ain't he? 
Yeah, he's a freak. But what does that make us? We are people. Real people. Everyone else is phony, but we are real. Dialogue! Lisa gets captured, but Patrick rolls in for the save. <laughs> Holy shit, did they just kill her too? Hey, I forgot about this guy that was looking for Davy Jones' locker out in the pond. This back and forth thing is really weird. He finds the bodies and here comes the fuzz. I also forgot about Uncle Rob and it's Tab Hunter! They form a posse and it's time to search, which should be easy since there should be some kind of tracks in the snow. That blizzard must have slowed them down a bit. Yeah, but no tracks. Convenient! There's more walking and shouldn't they split up a little bit while doing this search? Alright, everybody spread out. <laughs> now you decide to do that. It's a good thing he's trying to hide. They find Lisa and... This one's still alive. She lives! Elsewhere... <laughs> and down goes Patrick, but everyone heads towards the shots. Is Tab Hunter his dad? Shoot him! Shoot him! Don't! No! In your face. Here's some classic good cop, bad cop. You're dead wrong, man. We just went there for water. I think you're a fucking liar! Hold it, Bill. You're not too good on VWs, are you? Hmm? Let me ask you a question, sunshine. How do you put water in an air-cooled engine? Here's more questioning. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you want me to testify about. You lying little bitch, come on, tell us the truth. Holy shit! Oh, and Lisa's dead. There's more questions and then we get some exposition. He was a child that no one wanted. And my family took him in and raised him. With love and compassion. Well, fortunately for me, gentlemen, I'm outside the law. Sounds like a man who's gonna take matters in his own hands. Frankly, Blaine, I don't give a damn. Yeah, I can tell you usually give a damn about your job. And suddenly we have a Death Wish movie. This film couldn't afford caskets or a hearse for the funeral. Uncle Rob rents two hospital beds, picks up something from Charlie, and starts his operation. Look at that sweet rat tail mullet. He sweet talks him and the gang in the car. You. I get back or I'll blow your fucking head off. And they go back to the house and oh shit. Then we learn that Rob is Patrick's dad. What? Come on, look at me! No. Yes! No. My brother made this mask for me so I can function in the outside world! Holy shit! Uh-oh. What the hell's going on in a projection room? The fuck? It's just a movie? What? Hey, I got an idea. Let's go in there and show them what monsters are really made of. Wow, these guys are truly frightening. Grotesque is a film that's built lopsided. It's built kind of like a sandwich with a exploitation horror film at the beginning and a revenge film at the end. The problem is both those segments are so short that you're left with this big gaping hole in the middle, which is essentially people running around in the snow. The pacing is horrible and what could have been an interesting concept 
just slides off right into the dumpster. With the dad being an effects guy, there's really only two paths this film could have taken. The first would be that special effects would be used against the punks. The other would be that this whole thing's been a movie the entire time. Which kind of makes sense since he's showing home movies of him murdering his wife to the girls earlier in the film. So the ending does make sense. Until you get Frankenstein and the Wolfman raising some hell to close the movie out. That makes no fucking sense, but whatever. At that point, the film isn't salvageable, so who cares? Grotesque is a mess, and I'm pretty sure there were probably a few problems with this production.